Okay, so a worked example of how we use the kinetic energy formula. Now, if we consider a person here lifting a ball uh, up a height, we can lift that ball up a height of uh, two meters. Two meters. So this person is going to lift the ball two meters. And the ball has a mass of four kilograms. We know there's some energy being transferred here. First one we know is the person, well, they are a store of chemical energy, and they are transferring that chemical energy into gravitational potential energy. The way they do that is by doing work. And if you can remember the formula for work done, so the work done is equal to the force times the distance over which that force is moved. So the work done is equal to the force here, this is the weight of the ball. Well, that's the mass, so the weight of the ball is going to be 4 times by gravity, which is 10. That gives us the weight, times by the distance that force is moved, which is 2 metres. The work done by that person will be, so 4 times 10 times 2, gives us 80 joules. So the person is going to expend 80 joules to the ball. Okay. Now, how much energy has that ball gained? Well, if the person has done 80 joules, and if we assume there's no energy loss, there's heat or anything else, uh, then let's just check that ball should hopefully gain 80 joules of GPE as well. Well, we know the formula for GPE is GPE is equal to mgh. Well, the mass of the ball is 4. We know gravity is 10. And the height the ball has moved up is 2. So 4 times 10 times 2, great, is 80 joules. So that ball now has 80 joules of gravitational potential energy stored. If I release that ball, what happens to it? Well, it moves. Gravity is an attractive force. It pulls it downwards, and it will start to accelerate. Right now, it's at, at zero velocity. It's stationary. We imagine the person's just held it up there at two meters. And that GPE is going to be transferred into kinetic energy. So all the energy it's got here is going to be transferred into kinetic energy. It's going to take a little while. It's going to take two meters for it to transfer all of that energy. Uh, but just before it hits the ground, how much energy has it got? Well, the formula for kinetic energy is quite a complicated one. Ke equals a half m v squared. It's probably the most complicated formula you're going to do at GCSE. Put that into a triangle. It's a little bit bigger than most triangles because now we've got an extra. There's three things on this side. We know that it's going to be half times m times v squared all on the bottom. And this is going to be Ke up here. Well, assuming if we can consider the law of conservation of energy, we know that if there's 80 here, turning to 80 here, there must be 80 joules here. So we know it's got 80 joules of kinetic energy. Well, what does that translate to in terms of the velocity? What's the very fastest this ball could ever travel at uh, if we ignore the effects of air resistance and heat and energy loss and everything else? But just before that ball hits the ground, assuming no energy loss at all, it will have 80 joules of kinetic energy. And what does that mean in terms of the velocity? Well, if we take this triangle here and we can use it to rearrange, so I'm going to get V squared because it's half velocity, V squared and I cover the V gives me kinetic energy divided by a half times M. So Ke over a half times M. Well, what numbers do I know? I know that kinetic energy is 80 divided by, something like that space here at the bottom, a half times M. Well, a half times M, the mass was 4, a half of that is 2. So the maximum velocity of this will be 80 divided by 2, 40 metres per second. Sorry, that's V squared. Okay, it will be 40. So what do I need to do then? I've got to remember just to square root that. So if V squared is 40, then V must be the square root of 40. So V is the square root of 40. Whatever that is, you can work that out on your calculator. Okay, and that's how we use the formula for kinetic energy to find the velocity of an object, or the maximum velocity. In reality, it would be lower because this number would be slightly lower because some energy will have been lost. Every time energy is transferred from one form into another, energy is lost, usually as heat.